I'm going to be showing you the process to change the rear trailing arm bushes in an E89 Z4 or Z4. Uh, this process should apply to all model years and all engine variants. Uh, this particular one is a 2009 35i uh, in right hand drive. So uh, before we go over the process, let me just show you where the rear trailing arm bushes are located. Uh, here on this side, I'll just point, that's the rear trailing arm there. Uh, we'll go around the other side to the one that I've already removed. And here's one I prepared earlier. This is the rear trailing arm. And uh, there's a, a bush that goes in the, the hole there. Uh, there it is there. There's the bush inside of then the carrier. And then the whole carrier assembly goes up inside of a, a hole in the chassis up in about the centre of frame there. Uh, and so uh, these are the bushes we'll be replacing. Uh, we'll go over the process a bit more in a minute. Uh, let me just show you what we're, why we're doing it. And so this is the carrier assembly with the original bush. Let me just try and remove that. There we go. So carrier and bush. Uh, these original bushes, these ones are perfectly fine. My car only has about 50,000 kilometres or 30,000 miles on it. Uh, there's no tearing or damage to them, but they are a little bit flimsy. Uh, and so they tend to twist, causing uh, the wheel to tow out, I believe, which gives you the effect of like a rear wheel steering when you don't want it. Uh, when you're in corners or at low speed under hard acceleration and that's where I've been noticing it. So the rest of the suspension is all standard in the car and I really don't want to go too far in modifying the suspension. I just want to make this, this small change and see how I go. Uh, these these bushes, the rubber is, is you can see how far inset it is uh, from the, the steel insert there and from the band on the outside. Uh, the bushes that I'll be replacing them with are these ones here, which are actually originally designed for an E36 or E46, a much earlier BMW. Um, they're the same diameter there, uh, no, no difference there, but they are a bit narrower. So if I align, and the, these particular ones have a flange on it. So these are an aftermarket uh, from Hard Race. Uh, I think it's their part number 7260 for a pair of these. And if I align the, the flange there with the edge, you then get an idea that the, the metal uh, band is a lot narrower. However, the rubber bush inside is a lot wider. It's the full width. It's not recessed back inside. So these, and I believe these are a slightly harder rubber. So these should twist a lot less than the original ones, uh, but maybe still a little bit more than a fixed bearing, of course, or a nolathanes type bush. Um, I decided I wanted to try and minimise NVH and so I want to give these ones a go first. The other thing that I'll be doing in, or in utilising these, because they're a little bit narrower, means I can also fit these R-tab limiters, rear trailing arm bush limiters or spacers, and these are like a, I don't know, Delrin type material here. Uh, that can fit in there. So these won't work with the original bushes uh, because the bush is too wide uh, but with the new bush one of them on each side and the new bush push that in there and that's in position. So with those spaces in there, not really spaces, they are limiters, they absolutely really limit the amount of um, twisting movement that uh, that bush can go through. So uh, they will work with these narrower E36, E46 style bush and uh, that's what we'll be fitting. Uh, the tools required to do the job, uh, 10 mil spanner, 19 mil spanner, I also have a larger 22mm spanner just to hook over the 19 to give me a bit of extra leverage. A scribe tool or a marker. A tape measure and ruler I found useful, I'll show you later. 8mm uh, quarter inch drive socket, 10mm quarter inch drive socket, quarter inch drive ratchet, extension, uh, quarter inch drive screwdriver, uh, short extension. In 3 8 drive, a 13mm socket, ratchet and some extensions in half inch, a breaker bar, ratchet, a 16mm and 18mm socket and a 19 The 16 and 18 are actually 
sort of quite unusual sizes for metric kits and so just make sure you've got those 16 and 18 you'll also need uh, some extension bars in half inch as well the special tool required to do the job is this device here a puller and this is required to remove the old bush and to install the new one uh, now if you are putting bearing type bushes in or nolithane bushes you won't need this for reinstallation you'll only need it for removal if you are happy to butcher your old bushes uh, in getting them out and you're not fitting a one like this going back in you're doing the nolithane or bearing then you don't even need the special tool you can get in there with a hacksaw and chisels and stuff and just push uh, or knock the old one out uh, but that's the, the special tool. The special tool is generally sold to suit E36 or E46 cars. So I found it hard to find one specifically for Z4 or E89. Turns out that they're predominantly sold for E36 and E46. So just find yourself one of those. Sometimes they've got a, a round disc on the end. Sometimes they've got flat bars. But this is the general sort of principle that you're looking for. Uh, these are the, the spacers. These came from FCP Euro 0930310010 uh, for these uh, limiters, uh, four of those. Some other tools I use for the job, a work light, a ratchet tie down, pointy nose pliers, emery paper, a 19mm deep socket or a deep socket to suit your R-tab tool, a paint marker, an 18mm spanner or extra 18mm socket and ratchet and a tension wrench. The first step is to get the car jacked up and on some axle stands or chassis stands. In this case the front's still on the ground, I've just jacked the back up. Um, I found it easier to slide in underneath um, on a, a little dolly there. Uh, when, uh, whenever I'm going to get under a car, even with axle stands there, just always put this, the wheels back under the car, just as an extra safety measure there. So once the car's up in the air, first part that we're going to remove is this uh, cross brace or brace here. Uh, start by removing these 8mm uh, screws that just go into a small metal plate that's in the infill area there. Then remove the 13mm nuts that are on these uh, arms up onto the... Uh, up, up underneath the car, a little bit hard to see and get to. Uh, then you can remove the 16mm bolts uh, that hold each end. So these are a slightly longer bolt than the other end. Um, remove that one, remove the one on this end. And then finally you can remove the two here, which are slightly shorter ones. You don't need to remove these bolts here. Uh, the whole thing can come off as then as one piece. I've already finished the left side of the vehicle and I did film some of the reassembly process which I might insert into this video later. I would recommend working on one side and completing it uh, at a time uh, because if there is something you can't remember how it goes back together you can refer to the side that you haven't yet worked on. So the uh, inner wheel arch trim is the first thing I'm going to remove here on the right side. It's not critical to remove it, but it definitely makes life a lot easier. And for the two minutes or so it takes to remove it, I think it's worth it. And it's just held in by some eight, uh, eight millimeter screws and 10 millimeter uh, plastic nuts up around all the inside there. And there is one under the back and one under the front. Now, found on the right side that I didn't see on the left side well, is that there is an uh, electrical wire here which is connected uh, to this guard. Uh, I presume that would be on all left hand and right hand drive cars on this side, but yeah, something to be aware of. Remove this plastic piece down here. You've already removed one screw uh, that was holding through it to the inner wheel arch trim. Uh, there's one more in here, 10 mil nut and an 8 mil screw from underneath. There's electrical uh, wire uh, connection crimped on there. So I'll just carefully remove that. And the plastic piece comes out.
to lower the trailing arm down, uh, we need some extra electrical connect or electrical uh, length uh, as these cables uh, with the connectors are inside this little plastic box. The left side's pretty easy because the uh, latches are on this side uh, away from the chassis, on this side with them next to the chassis. This was the tool I needed to use, a little um, reverse pick tool uh, to get in behind the latches and uh, just pull gently on one, get it unlatched and then on the other, open that little door and then you can pull those uh, connectors out. Also need to uh, get uh, the brake line removed from the trailing arm. So there's one 10 mil uh, nut on the top here. So I'll take that one out and note the length. That's the longer of the two we're gonna take out. The other one is uh, behind here. So it's actually easier to get on the crawler and get in underneath uh, to get the one on the back out. And that will uh, release this bracket that holds the brake lines. There's a little connector here. Uh, uh, that's holding the uh, ABS and brake pad sensor cable in. Uh, just pull up on that and release release those cables from that clip on the rear trailing arm uh, just to give us a bit more length also. So I'm lying on my back on the creeper looking up at the rear trailing arm here, the bush up inside. This is the carrier assembly that we're going to be removing three 18 mil bolts holding it in before I do anything I've marked the position of those bolt heads using a blank, uh, blue uh, paint pen uh, on the other side I tried scribing but it didn't work so well because the bolt head uh, had left other marks so it's hard to tell which marks are which uh, on this side I'm trying the paint pen uh, and take this little connector off of here just to give that cable maximum length as this comes down uh, I'm going to take these one and two, these two uh, bolts out there uh, on the front, towards the front side of the car, take those two out completely and this one I'll take out about three quarters of the way and then get the jack under here to support this uh, while I take the rest of, uh, the, we'll take this bolt out and then lower the jack down so that this doesn't violently uh, drop out of the car. So uh, don't do as I said. Um, what I found, this is actually how I did the left side. I had the jack under there the whole time when I did the other side. And I've just realized that was a good idea um, because on this side, I did take the two bolts out uh, the front of the this um, carrier here and left the back one in and the front dropped down. It's actually uh, bent the carrier bracket slightly here. Uh, and so uh, having all that weight hang on one side. So. Um, yeah, best to put the jack under and support it through the whole process. It does make it a little bit more difficult getting up to the bolts on the back, depending on the position of your jack, uh, but you do want to support that trailing arm while you take all the bolts out. And uh, now that I've got all the bolts out and it's lowered down a bit, apart from the bend in the slight bend in the bracket here, uh, I'm checking just to make sure that the uh, mating surface of the carrier is uh, parallel with the chassis where it mounts up to and it is all the way around uh, because we're going to have to replicate that later. Make sure the cables aren't caught up on anything, that there's plenty of slack in them and then carefully lower the jack and that will come down. go so that's its its rest position and now we can remove the through bolt uh, uh, that holds the carrier onto the bush the carrier bolt is out and this will pull out uh, there are some the rubber edges that only sort of comes out to one side pull it up Tricky, there it is there, and the carrier is off. And yeah, I've definitely got a bend in that. Um, has it damaged the weld? I'll be able to straighten it, but uh, something for you to be aware of.
put some anti-seize or grease on the thread of the shaft just to stop it uh, galling or binding. And this is going to go on this end and pass it through there. Nut will go on there and that's the end that we're going to tighten from to remove the bush. Now the original bush will push out or pull out either way. Uh, the other side I took out this side. This one I'll try taking out this way. Uh, so put the tool through there. Now the tool is in place, but before I uh, pull this bush out, I just took, well, I tried with the blue marker again, didn't really work, but I've taken a little scribe here and just scratched the edge and uh, even get the ruler and make a note of how far out the bush is on this side, uh, just uh, for reference sake when we go back in. And so that's um, about uh, seven millimetres uh, from the housing to the edge of the steel uh, band around the bush. Uh, I have seen people use rattle guns on there, perhaps that's all right. I'm just going to use a ratchet um, or the the, uh, uh, the breaker bar and, uh, and tighten this nut up under here uh, to remove the bush. There we go, and it's out. Uh, I didn't put any WD-40 or penetrant on this. Um, yeah, this one came out very easy even compared to the other side um, but probably only worth doing if, if you're going to let it sit overnight and let that stuff uh, soak in uh, but they should come out pretty easy get a bit of emery paper and just add a bit of a clean out wipe out with a rag and then on with a bit of anti-seize just a very thin smear. You may also be able to use grease just to help the new bush go in. I took a marker and put that little mark there on the top to mark the uh, top position uh, of the trailing arm uh, hole where the bush goes. And then on the bush, I put a mark here. I want uh, this bush to be installed. These uh, rubber little wings here, so this has uh, got a flange side that's gonna go in from this direction and uh, I want these uh, little rubber flanges, uh, sorry, rubber little wings here uh, to be on the left and right because that will try and, I believe, minimise the change in tow um, uh, as the trailing arm moves. Uh, the original bush is, is mounted like so, and so it has a better tendency to resist changes in camber um, but not to tow and I think tow is the worst thing because that um, gives you that rear wheel steer effect so uh, I've marked that there that there and now I'm going to install the bush in that position and um, with the, this flange on the outside I've put a little bit of never seize around the bush that's going in I've aligned it with a tool this is how I'm going to pull it into place uh, so the tool is sort of reversed now um, now, in this case, for this particular bush, um, the uh, this piece here would, if I if I had pulled it through, would have actually potentially pulled the guts out of the bush. So, what these just bits of scrap metal here um, that are up in there uh, to ensure that the force that's applied uh, from here is exerted on that flange area. Uh, so these are just single pieces that are wedged up in there. And now I will go ahead and tighten this nut here. Uh, and pull the bush into place. So I've made sure that it's 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 pretty much in alignment. It's going to pull through square uh, just by adjusting the position uh, of the back piece. So the bush has been pulled into place now. Uh, flange here is hard up against uh, the rear trailing arm. Um, just out of interest, I did measure now the distance. So remember it was seven millimetres to the outside of the steel on the other one, then another millimetre or two, two millimetres of rubber. Uh, this one's about eight millimetres. So it's inbound a little bit of where the other one was, the original one, but uh, that's why we've got the slotted holes uh, in the carrier here um, to allow for that adjustment. And it's also why you really should get a wheel alignment after doing this job. I've got these aftermarket bushes, uh, which as I said, I've just decided to put that rubber, little extra rubber um, 
flange area to the sides. Um, the original bushes are the other way, so there is a little extra rubber piece here. So if you are fitting uh, OEM bushes back in, uh, mine were actually perfectly fine. There's no damage to them. Uh, I just think they were a bit soft and gave up a bit too easily uh, under load. Uh, but if you are fitting original bushes back in, then these have a, a split in the steel band or two parts of the steel band and uh, it just put uh, the, one of the splits uh, facing up, so it doesn't really matter which way. Uh, seem to be able to go any which way, as long as uh, the split is facing up, and this rubber area is towards the top, if you want to replicate how they were fitted uh, from, the, from the factory. And that's where marking them the distance that they were in, the seven millimetres, would be important because then you would try and replicate that with the new one going in. Then if you could put everything back and the carrier back in exactly the same position, your wheel alignment won't be out by much. I've uh, straightened the little bend in my carrier now. Uh, and if you were fitting OEM bushes, then you can go ahead and put your carrier uh, back in place and, uh, and put the three bolt through and, and just uh, tighten it up. Um, a little bit uh, because I'm uh, putting these aftermarket ones in I'm able to use these spaces uh, or limiters and so I put them in place over the you know, inside the carrier and then carefully put this down in place and that's, that's in place through bolt through uh, bolt going through from the outside towards the inside of the car and then the nut on the inside. I'm only going to do this up uh, just, just sort of firm it with a socket and spanner here uh, just till the nut and that just starts to so that I can still rotate the carrier because um, we don't know what angle to put it on. If uh, I was to tighten the nut up like that and then push it back up through and get the bolts back in then we're going to have a lot of pretension uh, or tor uh, twist in the in the bush itself. Um, same if I was the other way. So um, what we'll do is just do that up firm, like so. And then we're going to get the jack and raise this up and push it up inside the pocket, and it will level itself out. And then we lower it back down again, and without touching anything, uh, tighten this uh, up to torque, and then put it up again a second time and put all the bolts back in. So I know from experience on the other side that uh, best to have the jack on a bit of an angle here, and you've got to pull it uh, sort of try and as you raise the trailing arm up, it's got to go uh, towards the outside of the car and towards the front of the car. So I've got the jack on a 45 degree angle, angled that way. So as it lifts up, it's going to pull it over into the pocket. Uh, let's see how we go. Making sure that I don't damage any of the cables, and the brake line, everything's out of, out of the way as we go up into position. See there, I'm going to start running into trouble. I haven't come over far enough towards the outside of the car, and I don't think I've gone uh, forward enough uh, with it either. Um, uh, so I'm going to need to find a way uh, to pull it over a bit further. Uh, let me show you what I've worked out here. Let's use a ratchet tie down from. Uh, from the under, there's holes in the underside of the trailing arm, so into one of those holes um, that's uh, closest sort of back to the brake disc. Uh, pulling forward to the uh, bottom corner, get the camera in under there, um, of the jack stand. And so I'm not, I'm not going to pull the whole jack stand out. And I have got, a, have got the jack here also supporting the weight of the car uh, on that. But um, yeah, it's just uh, helping to pull the whole trailing arm uh, forward uh, into position. And uh, this is working well for me. Ratchet tie down, pulling it forward, you know, continue jacking up. And because of the angle of the, the jack, it's going to pull it towards the outside of the car as go up. And it's going oh, perfectly inside of the pocket at the moment. There we go. I've pulled it over about as far as I can go. 
uh, before one at the bolt, the through bolt, uh, the bush is now hitting the side of the chassis. So can't really resolve that unless I let all this down start again. So now I'm trying to get the uh, carrier to sit. So I can't push it all the way up in because the through bolt sitting on the chassis. Uh, but this is far enough for the exercise. And remember this carrier, oh, see that can still uh, move. So I need to pull it into a position or twist it into a position that I've got a parallel, it parallel uh, with the with the chassis and that's probably pretty good there. I'm gonna get the measuring stick out and uh, and take a closer look. Now that I'm sure the carrier uh, face here is uh, parallel with the chassis, uh, I'm going to carefully lower the jack. There we go, that's far enough. I just need it far enough uh, that I can get to the through bolt uh, to get the uh, spanner and, or, and, uh, and tension wrench. Uh, to tighten that up. So we don't want to move that carrier bracket now. Um, it's in the right position. Now, the jack's uh, supporting the trailing arm. It really can't move. It's under quite a bit of tension there sitting on it. So pass it ruler up through here. And just measure uh, up to the mounting hole. Uh, that's about uh, 62, 62 and a half millimetres uh to the top face there and so i need that measurement now that if i'm doing up the through bolt and this uh, moves i can uh, twist it back to the right position in tensioning up the through bolt through bolt tension or torque specification is 81 foot pounds or 110 newton meters so uh, get in there and tighten that up millimeters so very close it's perfect uh, so that hasn't moved during that tension process now I'll uh, put the jack back up and uh, push that carrier back up inside the pocket Be careful not to get the wires caught again Not all the way in it's, as i said it's it's uh, it's not quite positioned right but it's far enough in now that i can get all the three bolts uh, started so we will grab those they're all the same bolts uh, back in uh, just yeah uh, done up about uh, three quarters of the way uh, so that they're back inside of their original markings as I said I know it's going to be out it's going to need a wheel alignment uh, but with it in that position even with the gap uh, still there between the carrier plate and the chassis uh, with all three bolts in there I'm going to take the jack out of the way carefully lower that down and the ratchet tie down out of the way and then I will proceed to tighten those bolts up so carrier now bolts uh, done up firm uh, to the to carrier up to the chassis and they're pretty much back in the same position now when I took them out. I know I need the wheel alignment still. Uh, now the tension on these, final tension is 57 foot pounds or 78 uh, Newton meters. the uh, cable or the connectors back inside the little box uh, and do that up. Um, this little tab here needs to go back on over the uh, little uh, captive uh, uh, thread sticking out there. Then we can put this back in. And I'll put the uh, 
uh, 10 mil uh, nut, plastic nut at the top, uh, the one underneath, and clip uh, the electrical uh, line back onto the edge of that plastic bracket. Now I've mounted the bracket here back onto the trailing arm, so there's the longer 10 mil uh, bolt in under there. Uh, another one uh, down in behind at the back there, and uh, those two are in, and then the electrical uh, lines here back into their clip. Uh, so all of that is back in place. The wheel arch trim goes back in. Now, you don't have to force it, it's going to sort of massage it into position. Uh, the easiest thing is to start sort of down in the front here, um, trying to hold the light and point, but it sort of locks into this bottom plastic piece, so that's where you start, and then just sort of feed it in up around the edges, uh, and, uh, and then push it over where the bolts stick through. Uh, so that's all, all back in, uh, in position and I've, there was an electrical line there, so uh, that's uh, been pushed in uh, to position. And now I will go ahead and put all the nuts and screws in. So back under the car and uh, on the home stretch, uh, this uh, brace piece goes back in now. Uh, these bolts here with the 16mm head, I think they're M10, uh, 50 foot-pounds or 67 newton metres. Uh, both the ends of these braces and the other ends back up there. Uh, these little screws back in and the 13 mil ones, wherever they are, back up here, hidden up in the hole there. The 13 mil nuts in there just did them up by feel. Uh, and that concludes everything under the car. Now, yeah, just out of uh, interest, or if you are interested, uh, these here are like a rubber dampener uh, that absorb vibrations. Uh, they're not a bump stop. Uh, that's what the previous owner of my vehicle, uh, their mechanic had replaced them. That's why there's still a, a label on here. And uh, the, their mechanic had told them that their bump stops had worn out and replaced these. Um, I really can't imagine them uh, wearing out, but they're definitely not a bump stop. Uh, they're just, uh, they just hang out in midair there and they're just designed to absorb vibrations. The last job is to put the wheels back on and take the car off the jack stands. So I've had a good chance to drive the car now and uh, this has been a definite improvement with no downside. Here I am at a roll racing event. I'm just over 400 horsepower going up against a 700 horsepower Jeep Trackhawk. And these are the conditions where it really makes a difference. Uh, about to put my foot down there with a the green light and the back end of the car squats, but I'm not getting the rear wheel steer that I was before, powering on through for a win. Okay, our next pairing now lining up. Let's have a look, see what we get. Coming down lane number two, I think, just, but here comes the Jeep Cherokee. But no, it'll be lane number two. The BMW goes through to the next round.